Hi there. This is The Biggest Apple Ever by Stephen Kroll and illustrated by Jenny Bassett. The Biggest Apple Ever. What do you think this book's going to be about? Once there were two mice who fell in love with the same apple pie. But you had to be there to see how it happened. On opening day at Mouseville School, the principal, Mr. Mouser, made an announcement. We will be learning about apples this fall, and to get things started, we will have a contest. Whoever brings in the biggest apple to his teacher will win a special prize. The judging will take place on Friday. Good luck to everyone. Here's everyone at school. And then Mr. Mouser is on the microphone talking out of the speaker to everyone. What do you think? Would you like to win a contest for finding the biggest apple? I have an apple tree in my backyard, said Penelope. I bet it has really big apples. There's an apple tree across from my house, said James. I'm going to climb it as soon as I get home. I don't have any apple trees, said Clayton, the house mouse, but I'm going to find Mrs. Mousley the biggest apple ever. Oh, no, you're not, said his friend Desmond, the field mouse. I am. Oh, yeah, said Clayton. Yeah, said Desmond. They look pretty excited about it, don't they? All the way home on the school bus, Clayton and Desmond talked about the contest. Maybe I could grow an apple tree with really big apples, said Clayton. It takes too long, said Desmond. I heard Mrs. Mousley say six years. I'll think of something, said Clayton. So will I, said Desmond. Here they are riding on the bus. Look at the color of the trees. Are you seeing some trees that color too? And there they are inside the bus. They've got big plans. When Clayton got off the bus, he sneaked back into town to see what Penelope and James were up to. Penelope had come down from her tree, and she was carrying two tiny apples. There she is at her house, and there's her apple tree. But James was still up in the tree across the street. He was picking very small apples. Clayton knew he'd seen bigger ones at the market. When Desmond came by a little later, he realized the same thing. Here's James up in his tree. The next day at school, Penelope and James brought in their tiny apples. No one else had brought in anything. Mrs. Mousley cleared her throat. <clears> throat> Class, we have a lot of work to start the year, but because we are learning about apples and have, having an apple contest, we will go to Barnaby's Orchard this afternoon. Everyone got very excited. I'm going to find the winning apple, said Clayton. I'm going to find the winning apple, said Desmond. Everyone looks excited to go to the orchard. Have you been to the apple orchard this year? I love going to pick apples. At the orchard, Mrs. Mousley pointed out the different kinds of apples. Then everyone disappeared into the trees looking for a winner. Clayton walked down one row, craning his neck. Hmm. Desmond walked around down another row, craning his neck. Hmm. Then Clayton saw what he thought was a really big apple. It was a little too high to reach, but he stretched for it. And at that same moment, Desmond saw the very same apple on the very same branch. And he stretched for it, too. Can you guess what happened? Look at, look at them right there. They bumped heads. And they fell down. I think we should bring this apple in together, said Clayton. No one said we couldn't, said Desmond. What a great idea. Look at everybody in the orchard looking for their own apples. Someone's up there picking apples, too. I like that they're going to work together. But when they got back to the bus, James had an even bigger apple. The apple was so big, he could hardly carry it. Clayton and Desmond looked at each other. What would they do now? Let's see. Where's his really big apple? Oh, there's his really big apple. That is the biggest one. And here's everyone else with their apples. 
getting back on the bus to go back to school. That night at dinner, Clayton explained the problem to his dad. Hmm, said dad. Apples don't come in too many sizes. Do you think he'll find a bigger one? I don't know, said Clayton. Then maybe James will win the prize this time, and it's okay if he does. Over at Desmond's house, Uncle Vernon said exactly the same thing. Here's Clayton and his dad talking. And Desmond and his Uncle Vern. And they said, that's okay if James wins this time. The next afternoon, they met at Barnaby's Orchard. They picked two huge baskets of apples, but nothing they found was bigger than the apple James had picked. But look at how much they got. You know, Clayton said, I think Dad was right. This time, James gets to win. But we've got all these apples. Why don't we bake a big apple pie? Desmond laughed. Great, let's bake the biggest apple pie ever, and we'll make it for our class. Clayton nodded, and I think I know where we'll find a pie pan big enough. Look at what he's thinking of. Look how big that pie pan is, and look how big that pie is that he's dreaming about. How are they going to do that? I don't know, but Clayton said he thinks he knows where there's a pan big enough. The following afternoon, Desmond arrived at Clayton's house with Uncle Vernon. Everything is packed up and ready, Clayton said. It's all in Dad's truck. But where are we going, Desmond asked. You'll find out in a minute, said Clayton. There they are. He's riding his bike. And then, look, Dad's truck is all filled up. Look how many apples. Dad drove with Clayton and Desmond beside him in the front seat. Uncle Vernon stayed in back with the apples and other ingredients for the giant pie. As they came around a corner, Desmond gasped, oh, Tony's Pizza! Of course, said Clayton. What could be better than a giant pizza pan? Here they go. They're driving in town. There's the truck with the apples and Tony's Pizza. Mr. Tony greeted them at the door. Welcome, welcome. We are ready to begin. And so they got to work, making the dough for the crust, kneading it, rolling out half into a big circle, and spreading it over the deep dish pan. Here they are, loading up all the apples into Mr. Tony's store, Mr. Tony's Pizza. And here they are starting to make the big crust. Look how big that's going to be. Then everyone peeled and sliced the apples, mixed together the sugar and spices, and spread the rest of the dough on top. Wow, said Clayton and Desmond when they were finished. Wow, wow, wow. An hour, said Mr. Tony. Give me an hour. The giant pan fit just into his oven. Look at all the hard work they did. They peeled all those apples, and then look at that big oven, that big pie pan is going to fit right in there. Mmm, I wish I could have an apple pie that big. The next day was Friday. Who would have the largest apple in class? James, of course. And Mr. Mauser handed him a prize. It was a cheddar cheese apple. Here's James's big, big apple. And there's his cheddar cheese apple, because you know mice like cheese. Mrs. Mousley looked surprised. Clayton, Desmond, you didn't bring any apples? The two of them grinned. At that same moment, the classroom door flew open, and in came Clayton's dad, Uncle Vernon, and Mr. Tony, struggling to carry the giant pie by themselves. Look at that. Look, there's Mr. Tony with his chef's hat on, and there's Dad and Uncle Vernon. Wow, that looks so big and delicious, too. How wonderful, said Mrs. Mosley. That's the biggest apple pie ever. We made it for the whole class, said Clayton. All of us together, said Desmond. They shared a high five, and everyone in the class had a very big slice of apple, of apple pie.